Hey everybody, Shelly here, welcome back. Today, probably the second time I've ever come to you with a video and I've not been out in the garden. So today, welcome, it is Saturday, it is Christmas Eve morning. And the reason I'm bringing this video to you indoors in the living room is because, well, we all know it's the big conversation going on across the country, the big deep freeze. So I heard that the entire United States has a huge a freeze. Even your southern states, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, South Florida, are all under this huge deep freeze. We're in Orlando in Central Florida. Last night was cold there, 30, like one. This morning it's cold here, 32. Tonight, probably in the 20s with a wind chill factor of about 17 to 19. So I'm inside this morning, having my coffee, having a great morning, and just trying to stay warm. I can do that because I'm not worried about the garden. I'm here to show you today what we did, how we prepared, and how we planned. So really quickly, let me show you the results of what you're gonna see that we did right here. This first picture is a picture of the peach tree. It's our third year peach tree. This year to fruit big, they have to have chill hours. There are so many chill hours a peach tree needs in its first few years to give you a big harvest. So if you're growing peach trees in Florida, you may want to check with your local nursery and see how many chill hours your specific peach tree variety needs. They all need to have it. Our third year peach tree, we don't want to lose it. We've had two little crops. We're expecting a big one this spring in April. We need to get us chill hours, but we don't want to kill it. We don't want to freeze it at 20 degrees wind chill factor of 17 or 19. We wrapped it like a burrito. There's your picture. We normally never put mulch under a peach tree near the trunk. We put leaves for mulch instead of mulch. We put burlap around the trunk, all to keep the heat in the ground and protect the roots. And we wrapped it in nursery grade blanket frost cloth to keep the peach tree warm. There you see it. The next picture you see here is just blanket over our strawberries. We container grow strawberries because we can move them according to the seasons. The sun moves one season, the sun moves here another season. We can transport the entire strawberry garden shelves just layered with all types of containers of strawberries. But I've got big strawberries fruiting. Don't want them frozen and kind of like get soggy. I, I just don't want to risk it. I'd rather have under a blanket. This next picture you see here is the result of that 90 foot, we have a 90 foot from house to the end of the driveway carport. We fill the side all the way down. We put all of the containers. If you see my videos, you see the container gardening. We line them all up. We put a soft blanket, freeze blanket on and a sheet of greenhouse grade six mil greenhouse plastic covering over the top. We'll leave that there for two days. We're not gonna take any chances. I've got tomatoes under there. I've got lettuces under there. I've got all kinds of things. We are not gonna risk our early winter harvest for one or two nights. We're going back in the 80s next week, Wednesday, 81 guys. This is like, we get a freak thing every year. We just wanna get through this. This next picture is the back. So if you've seen my garden before and you'll see it again in a few minutes, is the brassicas. It's all kale and broccoli. Yes, the brassicas, I know you're gonna put the comments can take freeze or cold, but I've seen videos of kale and broccoli that the frost ice was on the leaves and it just destroyed them and wilted them. Not gonna take that chance. I did put a light drop of the blanket cloth over the greenhouse cover and I dropped the plastic greenhouse. And all we have to do is zip it up. So that's what's happening. We're gonna get right into the video because what you need to see is the logistics behind how we scramble to get ready in Central Florida for, for a weather event like this, which we never have. This winter, we're, it's a little bit colder, so we have a little bit more work. Here we go. Here's how we prepare for a deep, deep historical hard freeze in Central Florida, guys. See, we're gonna be 40s tonight. Most of this is cabbage, um, cauliflower. All this is kale. Yes, kale and cabbage. And then we have another third bed over here. And we have another frost blanket on the greenhouse. And this is full of tomatoes. Good morning, everyone. We are out here to show you again how we just cover for some cold. We moved some tomato buckets in. And we are hauling all of these in on a dolly.
These are all coming in. They will line up all across here. We will have blankets, 21 degrees. We'll have those blankets. You see them sitting right there. And we'll have plastic over them. It's a big one. They can go first right against the shed. I have a link to my blanket um, video. These are blanket. Ooh, that's warm. So this blanket, I have a lot of these. The blanket, they keep it warm inside. And then we put a plastic greenhouse over it to just seal in the warmth. And it got down in the low 40s or the 40s last night. So we brought some of the buckets up on the carport, covered them with blankets and covered them with these greenhouses. During the winter months, the sun just comes right down very bright on the whole side of the carport. And since we contain our garden a lot, and I have my 30 plus tomato plants, we brought them in. We are preparing for a big freeze. It's supposed to be to be 19 to 21 here. So we brought all these pots into the carport along that edge. This is a sheeting, this is a greenhouse. And there's this blanket material that gets very warm inside. And I'm going to dismantle all of this. Last night it got down the 40s, so we went ahead and did this. I'm going to show you this from the other side. These tomatoes have some really big tomatoes, nice tomatoes. All of them do. Lots of tomatoes. We will go ahead and lift this big plank up over the top. Everybody is out picking their basil and harvesting these great big basil plants. I'm not doing that. I use these big gigantic 35 40 gallon nursery buckets for various projects but for winterizing i just pop that over it and again i have one of these little blankets over it just remove the blanket oh wow look how green and beautiful that tomato is it's gorgeous and i have lettuce and this if i'm feeling this it's so warm it's wonderful look how beautiful and green this is there is lettuce and some kale I know kale can take really cold temperatures. I went ahead and covered this because of the lettuce. This is the cucumber. We don't have a big high tunnel. We put first down the blanket, we put down the greenhouse covers, and then we put the greenhouse plastic on top. So we're ready now for coming up. We're gonna have 20s, possibly teens for Christmas. So everything is under here. These are the lettuces, they have to be warm now we have some we're doing we have some that we've opened up you can see nice and sunny this morning wow the sun's powerful and we're going to uncover these all the way down okay we're on the back side we've lifted the blanket and the greenhouse covering up and over so tonight we only have to pull it over Here's all of the container gardening. There's the kale. Lettuce did great. Okay, all the lettuce, everything stayed good. I'm glad I had it covered. Broccoli loves the cold. Lettuce did wonderful. These are all the containers. There's the covering. We just lifted it up. We will put it back down tonight be very easy to do the sun has been coming down all day it's warmer I don't think it's been above 60 today everything's very nice raised beds do not retain moisture in the ground they dry out instantly but before cold always give your plants a good water especially if you're expecting a frost And I am watering this broccoli. And there is some kale mixed in here. This is a raised bed, 12 inches high. This tends to dry out very quickly. It's galvanized steel. So when the sun, we're just sitting out here, it does dry quickly. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a full, good, wet watering. Now I know broccoli can take cold, so can kale. 
We are going to get a greenhouse popped up here, just like we have on the kale. Just because of the threat of 21 degrees and kale can take 25, we're gonna go ahead and just close the greenhouse. No coverings, no blankets. We have the greenhouses there. They're just little cover greenhouses. We'll just pull those down and zip them up so it can, air can get through. We will go ahead, we're gonna build another one here in just a few minutes and we will pop another one on this broccoli, but we're gonna go ahead and give everything a really deep watering. The strawberries can take cold temperatures. 40s are fine for them. Out this morning checking them. Yeah, the 40s are fine. In fact, they're very healthy and vibrant in the cold weather. They like colder better than heat. So they all look really good. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. 